Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. On this video we'll be looking at the windscreen wiper. As you can see, we've covered this topic before, but we're just going to show you some applications and a way to improve your technique. Don't forget, drop us a line, give us a like because it really helps us out. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications. You'll get, you'll get this one day, don't worry. I know. Maybe after I freed the fair yeah. and bought a tea. Bought a tea. As in t-shirt, not a cup of tea. You buy a mug though, and make tea in it. On this video, we're looking to teach you how to use the windscreen wiper. Now we've done this video before, there is a link in the description and we'll put a link at the end of the video so you can go straight through to it. We're aiming to teach you how to perform the technique, why we'd use the technique, how we use the technique and there's lead-ons from this video. This is not the be or end of the technique, this is just an opening. It is. It's a useful little gambit and we're going to show you various ways to do it. That's rather pretty and proper gambit. The boat's on quick today. Well, well, and on Thursday we'll show you a couple of handy dandy exercises to help you improve. Right, this is the technique part. If you've seen the windscreen wipe video before, you'll like you're it. You're a star. Hand position. Now, usually top and bottom of the cane, and we've got a nice bit here that usually goes on to bony provenance, which we'll show you later on in the, the video. And it's going from one side to the other. And whether you're left-handed or right-handed, still the same motion. Chris is going to show you something from the K-Master system and it's called the broom block. So Chris, if you don't mind just keep doing a quick yeah. broom block. So with the broom block, your hands are really close together, you're sweeping the floor, and you have this body movement, because on its own, the leverage on that is not very powerful, so it's the body movement. And as they say in the film, sleep with <sighs> Sweet yeah. right. Yeah. This is just a basic thing. Chris is going to do a two handy grab. I'm grabbing you with two hands. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> so the idea is to pop up, grab the cane so you've got complete control, hit into the elbow, and move them. And you can see they've moved offline. You can hold and punch, but this technique works really well because no matter how much Chris puts a pressure on me, there is that point where you heard the expulsion of air where it's just hit onto the back of the nerve. That's quite humorous. Cute. Was it funny? I get a bone. <laughs> and that's all you're doing. So rather than locking out as an armbar and going across, you're just using the cane to come in and turn the throat. That's just one application. We've got other bits in other videos where we show you how to do, only turn them, but drop them, turn them and lift them. That's another video. So Chris is coming now going to show you how the opponent's body will turn. I'm a bit sort of stunted here because I haven't got much body strength and you're just a big bad meanie. Now, this is for you being fishing for Jesus. Ready? With me, how I grip my cane will determine how I do this lovely move. If I got it in the, what we call the phoenix position, it comes up nicely, I can bring it across. If my hand is down, I get a slightly bent elbow, comes across. If he looming threateningly, I might have my cane here and I can pistol grip it and do it across. So if he's right handed, he's going to grab me with his left. As this comes up, I'm wary of that, so this is just a little something to put in. As I've got my cane up, doesn't matter where I go, as I'm pushing, my foot's sweeping round, so not I'm only am I using my arms, and you can see the flinch there, I'm using my hips, my shoulders and my core, and I'm thrusting him round. If he's got friends, it gives me an advantage. We've developed a real basic drill. We've got Reggie in the middle, and Chris is going to put the cane right <laughs> and he's going to extend the cane through. This simulates hand, forearm, upper arm. 
So, but uh, if Chris put his arm there, it'd be a little bit of a problem because <laughs> not only will I hurt him doing this, but I'm then going to hit him. So the cane comes up, it's knocking his arm out of the way, striking through. We go again, comes up, knock out of the way, a little bit more, missed. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to come back the other way. I'm going to do this from standing and do it nice and slow. I've elected to do some upswings. Doesn't matter on the strikes, I just happen to like these ones for this situation. So Callum's going to thrust mightily at me and I'm going to block. If I'm here, he puts some resistance on. It's, it's becoming a battle of who's stronger. Here, I've got that nice effect. I'm pushing my weight round on the ball of my foot to do an upstrike. And this lends itself nicely. I'm rotating all through my feet, my core, to do another up strike. If I miss, I've got a guard position here. If I hit, I don't have to worry. A little bit faster. And one of the rules we always say, Callum comes in, I don't know when he's coming in. I missed, but I don't stop to go do that again. That's not reality. If you miss, I'll have to step in, go again. Just because I missed the first time, I'll put it back in. If you miss the technique, don't stop. If you're sitting down, this could be restaurant, cinema, maybe a lecture on the local hominids, I don't know. I tend to have my cane between my legs like this. It may be here. But for the sake of this, it's going to be here. Cane's come in. I've struck. I've done my technique. Because of my hand position, I'm not going to shift my grip. So I'm just going to bring this over, use my hand to strike down. Nothing flash, nothing simple. Straightforward technique. But a little bit faster. He's in. He's out. If I am mobile, because this is a disadvantaged position. As it comes through, I'm rising. And then I've got all my other nice techniques that I like to do. For two canes, here in the UK, very cold, very wet, my mobility is shot. So I will actually take just a half step back. That's all I'm doing just to keep my balance. So I've got three points of contact on the floor. It comes through slowly and it's just getting it out of the way. Then it's into the almost an elbow strike. So a little bit faster, Chris. Man. And it's usually just a tap as I'm coming round to do the strike. The reason I'm coming down in an angle is that if I've overbalanced and it comes down, I do have a hope in hell of getting some balance back in my body. Will I use this in real life? I, I personally don't think so, but that's because of my condition and my pain levels. I'm more likely to do another technique which we'll show you on another day. Right, in this video, we've only shown you four strikes, four different strikes. They're ones that we do. What we want you to do, experiment. Make a video, show us what you think, drop it along to kevin at sonsofcane.com, give us permission to use it, We'll put it up on the, ch on the channel. Maybe we'll adapt it for Kevin, maybe for me. Callum will have a go. But what I'm going to do is just have my cane and I'm going to try different strikes. So, got my broom block, comes across. This works quite well. I'm quite fond of doing this, but that's just me. I love turning my back on the opponent because it's such a clever idea to do. If I'm in this position, you've seen the pistol grip, I can deflect, strike, I've got my... I've got my moves. Freestyle there. What comes naturally? If I'm going this way, yeah, much better. You'll see the techniques as you do them. If I'm coming that way, I've got a nice distance hook strike. I could be here all day doing this. So windscreen wiper, very good technique. We'll show you ways to improve it. It is a technique. It's not the be all, it's not the end all. It's something that you might like and works for you. One-handed, it doesn't work for me. Two-handed, I quite like it. Whatever strike comes up will be fluid on the situation. 
and we will talk about that in a later video. So, this is a tool for your toolbox. Now, being an ex-naval engineer, I had a big toolbox. But what I used was a six inch rule, an adjustable spanner, a teaspoon, and Zeus tables. They were my main tools, and I always had them with me. And I picked up a specialist one when I needed it. So, probably not my adjustable spanner technique, but it is something that I would use in the right situation. So in this video, we've shown you how to do the technique, and we've gone a little bit of a practice drill where we're getting a little bit faster, a little bit more accurate. <laughs> and Chris gets up close with Reggie. Leave Reggie alone. There's no stopping this boy. So one thing we'd like you to do is just keep practicing. Get your striking that you want to do it. Will we use it? There are certain circumstances you would, Chris, yeah? Yep, double grabs, really good technique. If you can see that long, slow, lazy haymaker coming in. Yeah. Kind of thump punch you throw at me. Well, lazy anyway. As with everything, make this technique yours. You do not have to do it exactly how we've performed it. Adapt it to your needs. I thought you were a nice little performer. We find this absolutely works perfectly if you're in a confined situation. So if you're in a corridor or you've been pushed against the wall, this works great. Especially a cupboard under the stairs by your evil uncle and aunt. Okay, Dobby. We have got another video planned for this. I will point my wand very hard at you. Oh dear. We've got another video planned. We won't tell you exactly what it is because um, we, kind of, yeah. we kind of like it. If we say anything, it's going to tip them off. So watch out for part two of this video. And part two gives you a little inkling of what we're doing. I'm glad that made perfect sense. It will do when part two comes out. Uh, part two to you too. Subscribe. Ring the bell, rang his bell. Don't forget, you've got to drop us a line, you've got to give us a like, or else we send Reggie round. I think we've done him over, so you'll meet Ron later. Ron. Ron. You're in blue. Where's your t-shirt? Where's your mask? Where's your mug? Where's your hoodie? Bad Reg. Don't forget guys, there's a link in the description. We're now going to spend 10 minutes where Chris is just going to apologise to Reggie for the abuse from this video. I love Reggie really. 